Peace, 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 love, light of healing, peace, love, light of healing, peace to the gods, peace to the earth, y'all, climb on in, climb on in, fam. Y'all, climb on in. Let me know how you feeling, how you doing. Climb on in the building. So, uh, I just dropped a video talking about proteins. And boy, 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 I had to block like 50 people, <laughs> erase like 70 comments. <laughs> so, look, we finna talk about it today. Let's talk about proteins. And there's many different things that I can discuss uh, about how bro proteins are bad uh, for human consumption and how humans does not, how we don't need proteins. We need simple amino acid structures to rebuild cellular tissues and the molecular structure. But I'm going to talk about one thing that's going to blow your mind. I want to talk about protein and its connection to calcium and how it can become very, very deadly for the body and, about, and, uh, and basically about how most of your so-called diseases, which is nothing but natural detoxifications, y'all know, I teach that, you know, healing illusion we call disease, but really showing y'all how most of y'all so-called diseases is actually coming from protein, too much protein use, kidney failure, kidney disease from protein, uh, prolapsed colon coming from protein, uh, kidney stones are coming from protein, nervous system issues is coming from protein, arthritis, thyroid gorders, osteoporosis, abnormal heart rhythm, uh, bone loss, bone density loss, bone and muscular issues, hypertension, all of this stuff come from proteins because whenever you eat a bunch of proteins, you actually alert a certain system to make calcium be pulled from the bone calcium matrix, and then you have a different problem. So uh, make sure y'all got y'all pens and y'all pads, and uh, once y'all get in, y'all got y'all pens and y'all pads, and y'all truly, really, really ready to learn or remember something, you know what I'm saying? Type in some nines, and look, let's get to it. Let's get to it. You know, there's a lot of people trying to debate me about the protein. Protein is a myth. Only time we can call it a protein if we eat simple amino acid structures that have been made into complex amino acid structures after it have went to, through a metabolic process by an animal eating it. And then you go eat the animal and then you get protein from that. But animals don't eat protein. Animals eat simple amino acid structures. Then they go through their metabolic process and then they create proteins and then you kill that innocent animal and you eat that innocent animal and then you eat the second hand amino acid structure which came complex meaning that you're not even getting the efficient fuel or building blocks to recreate your cellular tissues anyway because guess what you're eating the person that already ate it so you're eating secondhand nature amino acids that you will call a protein anyway protein is a myth you don't need proteins. You need simple amino acid structures. Simple amino acid structures is what builds DNA. Simple amino acid structures is what builds cellular tissues. When you eat complex amino acids, it's very acidic to the body. So when you look at the word protein, if you Google it, it's going to tell you that it's an amino acid structure. We all keep forgetting that N word, amino acid. Acid is acidic in nature. It will change your potential hydrogen. It will change your blood pH. When it changes your potential hydrogen and when it changes your blood pH, it's going to alert a system. This system will be the, the bone calcium matrix. The reason why it alerts the bone calcium, calcium matrix by way of the thyroid and the parathyroid gland is because calcium is your most electrical mineral that's in your body. The most electrical magnetic mineral that's in your body is iron phosphate, but the most electrical mineral that's in your body is calcium. Calcium does a variety of things when it comes to the system. It's actually impossible to live without calcium. Calcium is actually the first mineral other than selenium that your body gets because calcium controls your heartbeat. So the body first gets selenium by way of the melanin dot when you're going through your embryonic stage, the moment of conception, and then the moment that your heart starts to beat as an embryonic actual sac, it's the first mineral is calcium. Calcium is actually in control of something called contractility. What contractility is, is your blood system, your blood vessels or your arteries constricting to actually bring blood to your heart. And, it, and the heart is an open valve that opens a valve and release blood through all out your systems. And then your lung or your respiratory system act as a pumping mechanism to pump the blood through the heart and through all out the rest of the extremities of your body. So when you look at calcium in its essential form, it's actually to constrict or contract your actual blood vessels for you can get blood throughout every extremities in your body, 
right? That's what it's for. Not only is calcium used for that, but calcium is also used as a buffering system. What do I mean by a buff buffering system? Calcium neutralizes acids, y'all. It's a neutralizing buffering system. So if you eat a bunch of complex amino acid structures that you call proteins, the metabolic by process or byproduct of this will be uric acid. When uric acid or urea is too high inside the system because your kidneys is not getting this uric acid or they're not getting the toxemia or the metabolic byproducts of what we call metabolic waste out of the body, what happens is the parathyroid will get alerted by what they call the immune system. I'm going to call it the lymphatic defense system. So the lymphatic defense systems will actually alert the parathyroid. The parathyroid will produce something called calcitonin. Calcitonin would then holler at the bone calcium matrix and it would tell the bones to strip calcium from the bone and release it into the bloodstream. Now, once calcium, yes, for instance, this is where gout come from. I'm glad you just said that. And I'm, and I'm getting to all this, but I want y'all to see the mechanism and the physiologies on how these things work because y'all don't know what y'all be talking about. Proteins is bad. One of the reasons, and there are thousands of things I can speak on on why you're not supposed to be eating protein. Now, when it comes to different ethnicity groups of people, they can still eat protein, but even it will get them in the long run. But you being a so-called African-American, you being a melanated being, an indigenous species here in America and all over the globe, your molecular structure is different from everybody else. So guess what? Protein will harm you quicker than it harm anybody else. Will it harm everybody else? Yes, it will catch up with them eventually. But will it kill your ass dead as a doorknob quickly? Yes, it will. That's the reason why gout is so high. Because uric acid and calcium. See, acid doesn't solidify. Calcium solidify. That's why if you have a calcified pineal gland, you have a calcium, a calcified pancreas, a calcified kidney. Look at the root word. It comes from calcium. It's where putrefaction come in at. Come in at. And the reason why is because the body is trying to heal itself. I keep trying to tell y'all that the body is constantly trying to heal itself. And these different symptomologies or physiologies of what the body is doing, the actions, the structure, function of the cells, we call these different things diseases. But these are actually the body trying to heal itself. It's just the body does a damn good job at trying to. So we end up harming ourselves in the long run. For instance, you eat protein. Protein come from an animal. The animal goes to the actual ground grass. The animal goes to the alpha, alpha sprouts. The animal go to eat the fruit. The animal go eat the bamboo shoots. The animals, most of the animals you eat, if not 99% of the animals you eat, they're herbivores. The reason why they're herbivores is because they know eating other animals will kill them. See that? If you look at the structure of your teeth, yours closely assimilate with the primate family. If you look at the primate family, they don't get their amino acid for other, other animals like felines do because they're not predators. They're nurturer. You're a nurturer. That's why you assimilate and you look like primates. That's why you have five fingers. That's why you have five toes. That's, I mean, 10 toes all together and 10 fingers. That's why you walk upright. That's why the hydrochloric acid in your stomach can only break down certain foods. That's why your lateral sizes and your canines is not long like everybody else's. That's the reason why you're not walking and running uh, horizontal for you can get up to 70 miles an hour to track down your prey. That's why you don't have claws and you have fingernails. Everything about you is a nurturer. Nothing about you is a hunter. That's why hunter and gatherers back in the day had to create certain type of tools to actually assimilate with other predator animals to actually kill and hunt they prey. So nothing about your physiology says meat eater, says protein eater. Everything about your physiology matches a herbivore or frugivore. And guess what? They are very, very gentle when it comes to eating their food because they don't have to run and track this shit down. They go and they go to a tree and they pick their fruit from the tree. They go to the grass and they elongate their neck and they eat the grass. And this is where they get their first amino acid or what you will call protein. All protein and all amino acid comes from the plant kingdom. There is no protein and no amino acid that come from anything else. So when you eat protein and amino acid that come from an animal, you're eating second nature or secondhand protein. We can cut out the middleman and go to what the animal ate and instead of us killing innocent animals and us eating the animals because we're eating a byproduct of the actual original amino acid in the first place. Now, when you violate nature, nature will always violate you. So by eating these complex 
amino acid structures that we foolishly call protein is full of acids. When the body is getting full of acid, it changes the potential hydrogen or the pH of the blood. Not only do it changes the pH of the blood, but it changes the potential hydrogen and the pH of the cell. Not only of the cell, but something called the interstitium fluid that's in the body. And this is a river of fluids that the cells actually float on. And this is what you call the lymphatic system. Whenever the body gets bombarded with acids because you're eating too many amino acid structures or what you foolishly call protein, what happens is the immunological system or what I'm going to call the lymphatic defense system will send signals to the actual parathyroid. If you don't believe me, Google it. It's called calcium signaling. And calcium signaling is basically what happens when the baby or this embryonic first is birthed. It signals calcium. Calcium comes from the mother. It hits the embryonic fluid. The embryonic fluid goes to the baby by way of the placenta. And then the baby gets his first heartbeat through calcium. Same thing that happened when too many acids hit the bloodstream. What happens is the parathyroid gets triggered by each human, each individual human being. And then it tells calcitonin get released. And calcitonin goes signals because it's a signal from calcium. It goes tell the bone to release calcium from the bone calcium matrix. Now you got calcium running around through the bloodstream looking for acids. What acid is it looking for? It's looking for the actual byproduct of the protein or what you will call complex amino acids. Guess what the broken down byproduct or the metabolic byproduct is that? It's called uric acid. So now what happens is calcium gets released from the bloodstream. It's trying to find uric acid because calcium is highly electrical. And when you look in as a, at an anion, or a cation, calcium is a cation. That's why it's actually Ca plus when you look at it on a periodic table. This is a buffering mechanism. It's coming to neutralize some shit. So it finds actual uric acid and then it neutralizes uric acid. How do it do that? It calcifies uric acid. Now, once the calcification come in, now the next stage is crystallization and putrefaction because once, once calcification come in, mucus come. Now, guess what mucus is trying to do? Mucus is trying to to engulf the actual calcification and break it down more, bring it to what you will call the lymph nodes. Once it gets to the lymph nodes, you have something called macrophages and bacteria that's going to try to work on this calcification to break it down more, and then it's going to bring it to the kidneys where you can excrete these things out the kidneys. How do you think you get kidney stones? That's calcium being transported by way of the lymphatic vessels to the kidneys, but you never got to break it all the way up anyway, so then mucus is going to try to save the day and go to the kidneys to, to further engulf this calcium because you've been eating too much proteins which breaking down to uric acid now it solidifies in the kidneys and then it crystallizes. they call this kidney stones same thing if it get on the nerve endings they call this parkinson disease same things if it get on the neurons of the brain they call this what y'all these are all degenerative nerve disease they call that alzheimer's then it's going to mix with a beta blocker amyloid protein that's going to really kill your ass every so-called disease that you can talk about in your body, there is a protein and calcium connection to it. And can't nobody on here prove me wrong. If you can, I will give you $10,000. That's how confident I am. And there's too many peer review back scientific articles proving this stuff. So all I'm saying is this, this is just one thing I'm talking about. Proteins, which I don't understand what y'all talking about. We don't need proteins. We need simple amino acid structures. Alert the calcium bone calcium matrix, which solidifies and calcifies and then crystallize in the body. And once you get to that stage, your body is going to go through a major detoxification. And you're going to call that major detoxification symptoms or symptomology, should I say, disease. So do protein cause disease? Not only yeah, but hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Look, they got something called a CAT test, right? And what a CAT test is, it literally stands for coronary artery calcification, y'all. Y'all can look it up. It's called CAC. I haven't been in the medical field for many years, but I believe that's what it's called. CAC, uh, coronary uh, uh, artery calcification. And this is an actual, it, it, it reminds me of an x-ray or an MRI where you can go to your doctor and they will actually take a x-ray with black uh, with, it's a contract's color of black and white and they will take a picture of your heart and based off of that they can tell you if you have calcium built up in your arteries 
Now, let me show you how amazing calcium is, but how deadly it is, too. Same thing with mucus. How amazing mucus is, but how deadly it is. Same thing with mineralization. How amazing mineralization is, but how deadly it is. Look, you, if you, if for instance, high blood pressure. Every high blood pressure or hypertension case always is too much calcium in the system with a magnesium deficiency. Because remember, calcium is in control of contractility and then magnesium is in control of dilation. So in order to get your blood vessels to constrict, to keep blood from, flow, from uh, flowing properly with the inside of the cardiovascular system, you need something to squeeze or constrict them vessels and then relax or dilate. This is how you push in and move in blood. All this is by way of something called photons or what we're going to call biophotomodulation. And by the way, this is from sunlight. So your blood can even flow properly without sunlight and moonlight. But guess what it uses? It uses mineralization, calcium, magnesium inside of the physiological structure to move your blood around inside the body. So you have calcium in the system that's used as contractility. It's literally doing this to the blood vessels. Then you have something called magnesium that's in control of relaxation or dilation. So calcium squeezes the blood vessels. Magnesium dilates and releases the blood vessels. So this is what your blood vessels is doing by way of the lungs and the actual cardiovascular mass inside of your chest that we call the heart. Now imagine you having too much calcium in your blood, but you don't have enough magnesium. It's going to do this. So what this is going to do, it's going to make the blood flow. Your adrenals, yes, your adrenals going to holler and your renin, your renin and your adrenals going to holler at the body and it's going to tell the body, hey, you need to uptake or you need to turn on cardio output pressure. So since the blood is constricting because you have too much calcium because you want to eat all this damn meat and you don't know what the meat is doing to your body and you're not bringing in enough magnesium to dilate the vessels and open them back up, the adrenal gland is going to say, you know what, put a whole bunch of adrenaline and cortisol in the system raise up the sodium that way i can kick up the cardio output for i can get i can get the force of the blood to flow through the vessels more harder that way it can reach the heart because if it goes a millisecond without reaching the heart you would drop dead or you would suffer from a heart attack so what happens is calcium it's so high in the, in the blood vessels that it constrict. My finger is the blood. So the adrenal glands will say, look, let's push blood super hard against the arteries to make it through the actual vessels. Do y'all know what that's called? That's called hypertension or high blood pressure because blood pressure is the amount of force that the actual blood and the plasma put on the artery, the artery walls while it's going throughout the cardiovascular system. Now, let's say if you have the adequate amount of magnesium inside of the body, guess what the magnesium will do? The magnesium will actually release and dilate the blood vessels. That way, the blood won't have to force its way against the artery walls to make it through the heart. That's called regular High, I mean, regular blood pressure. So just based off of calcium, calcium causes hypertension. It causes high blood pressure. You see that? Calcium actually causes calcium stones. It causes calcification of the pineal gland. It causes calcification of the bone. Have you ever seen bone spores? Bone spores is because of calcium, arthritis. When you have too many minerals inside the joints because they don't have nowhere to go. That's calcium inside the joints. And then it's calcifying everything together because you have too many proteins or too many amino acid structures inside the body. And calcium is trying to do its job, which is to buffer and neutralize acids. There is not one so-called disease that you can tell me right now that's not associated with too many proteins, which is bringing on a healing mechanism in the body, which is calcium being released by the calcium bone matrix, which is caused by calcitonin in the parathyroid gland. Not one. So for those that's on here, you need proteins to build muscle. You need 149 grams of protein per body weight. You don't have a clue about nothing you talking about. Y'all don't know what y'all be talking about. All y'all do is regurgitate what y'all hear other dumb smart people saying. And these people are not smart themselves because they are regurgitating what they learned from school. Remember, your school system was actually taught to you by Don D. Rockefeller in the, in, the, in the Carnegie family, which believes in eugenics, which believes in actually killing you. There's a book out, y'all. I posted it so many years ago uh, when I was dealing with Tiffany Haddish and her grandmother. I was in Tiffany Haddish's house. And uh, I had a book, two books. One of them was called Protein Equals Pain. Get that book. It's called Protein Equals Pain. It will blow your mind.
blow your mind how bad protein is for the system. I already knew this, but this is another man backing up my own clinical studies. Then it's another book called The Calcium Lie. It's called the calcium you lie, and it's the government created all these different calcium supplements and all these different magnesium supplements and these iron supplements for they can make trillions of dollars a year off of, but it is fucking y'all up and killing y'all because the body deals with holistic chemistry. The body doesn't deal with isolated chemistry. We are playing God and we are dying from it. Yes, y'all keep call you God. Yes, I call you earth and goddess, but we have still been created by something higher than us. So I'm not saying you the most high. We are many gods. That's what I'm calling you. That makes up this potential that the high, that the most high created, which is us. See that we plan the most high selling all of these different supplements, which is isolated minerals. And these minerals must come holistically together to balance themselves out. It is called electronic signal. You have to signal something. So if you don't have this electronic signal, there's going to be an imbalance in frequency in the body. The body is so amazing that it's going to compensate something in that ass. And compensation sometimes hurt because it causes detoxification. Y'all not getting it. You are not made to eat meat. There is nothing about your physiological structure that says you can eat meat. There's nothing about the anatomy. There's nothing about... Even even the enzymes that you produce in your mouth is made to break down alkaline food. You have something called trypsin. That is an alkaline enzyme to break down alkaline food. You see that? You have mucosoglobulate cells inside your esophagus. These goblet cells produces mucus to break down alkaline food. Then you finally get to the stomach, and then once it goes into the stomach, after it passes the cardiac sphincter, it goes into the body and the fungus of the stomach. Guess what happens? You have something called pepsigen and hydrochloric acid that mix together with mucus, and this creates another acid to help break down plant material. Plant material, not meats. You don't even have the high amount of hydrochloric acid inside of your stomach sac to break these meats down back into the amino acid structures that they need. That's why eating too many meats causes diabetes because now you have a bunch of cholesterol plaque buildup from the uric acid and the meats inside the systems and the pancreas hollering at the beta cells trying to release insulin to get glucose into the cells. But it's so full of lipid based chemistry from the meat that you eating. The insulin can't even act as a key mechanism to open up the cellular membrane to get the glucose inside the cells for you can get it efficient energy from burning off of ATP because of meat eating, because of dairy eating. It is crazy to me that y'all still think that y'all can eat meat. It is 2024 finna be. Wake up, y'all. Wake up. Wake up. And then you got all these people on here that ain't, that ain't even from our tribe, ain't even from our group, ain't even from our racial group, and our biochemical molecular structure is different. And y'all letting, they, letting them teach you this bullshit carnivore diet. You not a cave, man. You not a cave beast. You didn't come from the cave. You didn't have to sneak out rats and eat possums and, and kill for your food. You are a permaculture master. You are an agriculture master. You are an electroculture master. You didn't kill your food. You grew your food. Your physiological structure is different. Your teeth are different than their teeth. The hydrochloric acid in your body is different than the hydrochloric acid. Your melanocytes is different than their melanocytes. You have eel melanin and fuel melanin and neuromelanin in your body. They just have fuel melanin. You have magnesium, magnesium and selenium in your blood. They just have magnesium. And I'm not sitting here trying to cause a racial difference and try to cause a racial separation, but we are different. The food that your body and the fuel that your body requires is different than any other molecular structure here on earth. And these are facts, y'all. These are absolute facts. These are facts. You have something called melanopsin inside of your eyes. You can see the variety of colors of the rainbow. Can't nobody else even see. You have something called melanin per, uh, uh, per, perlipio uh, 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 senses, where you can actually see things a certain feet from behind you than any other race. You have melanocytes on your tongue and your taste buds. Can't nobody taste food like you. That's why your food is so seasoned. And when you get to other races of people, there's a more bland because you know that shit needed a little bit more seasoning salt. You know it needed a little bit more pepper and pepper. 
Eureka on it. Because your melanin, because your carbon is different than every other biological species here on Earth. So if all these things is different, you have something called the GFR. The GFR, and this is basically talking about the kidney filtration rate of your body. If you look at a urinalysis and you start checking the metabolic processes in a urinalysis on an actual CBC chart, which stands for a complete blood chart, they have something called African American filtration rate and they have regular filtration rate. If you wasn't biologically different, then why in the hell when you check the urinalysis, you have something called the African American urinalysis? Oh, because your body metabolized food different than everybody else. Your filtration rate in your urea is different than everybody else. You have more carbon in your body than everybody else, so your sugar is going to slightly be higher. That's why they say black people automatically come pre-diabetic. They A1C is automatically at a 5.7. That's because that is your resting point on your CBC chart. You are different. If you are different, if your chemical molecular structure is different, if your sodium and your bone mineral density is different, yes, we are more mineralized and more bone mineral dense than any other people on planet Earth. So if you require more minerals than every other race, don't you think your food need to be different? If you require minerals and electricity differently than anybody on earth, don't you think your water and your liquid and fluid intake need to be different? So stop it with this protein bullshit. Y'all are regurgitating people y'all don't even understand. You need to spend your time trying to understand you, your melanin content, your carbon and your molecular structure. Quit trying to tell me what somebody else said that don't even understand their own body. You don't need protein. You need simple amino acid structures and your food need to be high in chlorophyll or chloroplats or what you would call high melanin content. And these things are called anthocyanins. These things are called lysopins and all these other different long ass scientific names that y'all don't understand. And I can get on here and sound smart or I can keep it real like you. Eat food that looks like you. Eat food that is colorful like you. And I'm not talking about another animal because when you eat an animal, the only thing you're eating is the metabolic byproduct of what they eating already that is called secondhand food and you don't need that food you are a very 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 highly electrical being you need highly electrical food and first off that's going to be your fruits the second thing is going to be your vegetables and you need high h3o2 liquid content in your body of what we call fruit juices that is the easiest simple simple simplest thing if you just slow down listen to yourself make things make sense how does it make any type of sense that I'm going to get amino acids and proteins from eating the animal that went to the actual grass to get their amino acids and protein? Why on God's green earth will I eat the secondhand protein when I can go straight to the source and eat what they ate from, from the get-go? Hold on. Let's, let, let, me, let me. Hold on. I'm in nature. Let me show you how stupid this stuff is. I see animals. I'm looking around. I see an animal to eat nothing but meat. He eat grass sometimes, but 99.9% .9 he eat meat. He got claws. He's not vertical. It don't walk upright. It's horizontal. They have a tail. They can reach up to 60 to 70 miles an hour. They have long canines. The hydrochloric acid in their stomach is at a 1.2 all the time. It can break down freaking bones. The hydrochloric acid inside of their stomach can break down bones. They eat all day. They sleep 22 hours a day. It's only 24 hours in a day. These things eat so many proteins that they only can sleep. Look, they have to get rid of this protein. It takes them 22 hours of sleeping to just break down these proteins. To break down these proteins because it's so much. And you wonder that the regular life expectancy of a carnivore eater in the jungle is 21 years old. 21 years old, you are elder in the jungle kingdom if you are a carnivore. 21 years old. And the reason why their life expectancy is so damn short is because they eat a bunch of protein. Then you look at the biggest animal, the most strongest animal in the jungle, the civilback gorilla. Ain't a meat eater. It eat vegetables. You look at the oldest animal in the kingdom that lived. They can get up to 250 years old. It don't eat meat. It don't eat protein. It's a vegetable eater. They call it the turtle or the tortoise. The turtle or the tortoise. Then you look at the largest animal. The actual largest land animal. Not animal in existence, but land mammal. It's an elephant. And it don't eat no meat. <coughs> 
So you got the strongest of the jungle, the silverback gorilla. Guess what that is? Maintainly a frugivore. You look at the largest animal in the actual jungles, the largest ones that walk on earth. It's an elephant. Then you look at the ones that live the longest. It's a turtle. These are all non-essential proteins. They don't eat proteins. They eat amino acids straight from earth. Then you, you will take your regurgitating, yes, your regurgitating, studying from your enemy having ass, and then you will repeat this protein myth, but you never took your butt into nature and studied the real classroom to see, hold on, the things that look like me, the things that assimilate with me, the things that have teeth like mine, the thing that have fingernails like mine and not claws, the things that walk upright like me, they live in longer than me. And I wonder why. Is it that the diet is different because they're not eating protein, but you are? And then you will have the nerve to say, well, it's the digestive system. They, they, they food break down in two. No, it don't. Stop it with the physiological lies, y'all. No, it don't. I study gorillas for almost 15 years. It's a little difference. It's a subtle difference between us and them when it comes to physiology. It's a subtle difference. They are getting their mass and their muscles from animal movements because they walk like this sometimes. They swing from trees. They climb trees. They work out all day. And guess what? They work all day all, out all day and they're on a plant-based diet. So if you start strength training and if you start working out on a plant-based diet, you will gain muscle mass too. Look how much muscle mass I'm gaining. I've been working out every day. I done lost so much weight. I look amazing now and I feel amazing. And I'm on a plant-based driven diet and I don't eat meat nor protein and I'm gaining muscles and I'm damn near bigger than all these other people and I don't eat that crazy stuff so I don't want to hear that myth either you need proteins to build muscle no you need simple amino acid structures from the plant kingdom to gain muscles how do you think a two-ton cow get its mass it's two tons it don't eat no meat oh it get it from gr grass it get it from hay oh it get it from the vegetable kingdom Huh? What about a horse? They can get up to two and a half tons. Where do it get its protein? Oh, it get it from nature. Horses don't eat meat to get protein. Horses don't eat meat at all. Cows don't eat meat to get protein. Cows don't meat, eat meat at all. Gorillas don't eat meat to get proteins. Now, if you starve them out and you run them to the high mountains, they will eat bugs and shit to eat. But that's only if you domesticate them or if you force them in different areas. Same thing that they did with the Negro. They processed the Negro they, they, and, and they domesticated the Negro and then the Negro started changing his diet. But if you are in your, regu your regular essential state and you vibrate high, you know what to eat and you know what not to eat. You are a frugivore by nature. You are a fruitarian by nature, whether you want to believe me or not. Yes, the giraffe. Look, the giraffe hate meat so much that when trees grew taller, this mug went through an evolutionary process where it elongated its neck high enough where it could eat the trees because bushes wouldn't grow in how it was supposed to grow. So the, the giraffe went through something called adaptation where its neck got longer for it can stay eating what? Vegetables. We are a vegetable, plant-based, driven people. And our high essential foods are fruits, berries, and melons. And if anybody teaching you different than that, they're regurgitating the enemy. And they don't know what the hell they're talking about. And you need to run very, very, very fast and far away from them because they are feeding you indoctrination. And these are the facts. Is this coming from a book? No. This is coming from clinical trials. This is coming from healing people of all types of diseases. This is coming from getting people off of protein, off of meat, and lowering their CAC, or what you would call their culinary uh, uh, artery uh, uh, calcium test, and seeing how their hearts is healing themselves. Did you know the number one disease, so-called disease, in America is heart disease? Guess what heart disease is? It's not, it's not from cholesterol plaque. Because cholesterol, now, don't get me wrong. If you cut yourself, cholesterol and mucus will come in the area to clog. It's called coagulation. It will clog up to keep you from bleeding to death. Especially if you got high blood pressure and things like that, all that pressure going through the artery walls, it will rip through the arteries. The myocardium of the heart, it will rip through the left ventricle. It will rip an artery up. So what happens is the body is going to want to plaque that because the body is a natural healer of itself. So cholesterol will come and, and, and clog up that spot. As soon as cholesterol come and clog up that spot, guess what else is coming right after it calcium 
Now, calcium mixed with cholesterol is called cholesterol plaque. So is cholesterol plaque the damn disease? No, it's not. It's cholesterol disease. No, it's not. It's the calcium disease. No, it's not. It's what you eating. The body just trying to heal itself. And you don't know how to stay out your own damn way, so you die and then you blame it on diseases. It ain't no such damn thing as a disease. It's the body natural mechanism of trying to heal itself. And if you help the body detoxify instead of getting in its way and taking statins and all these other types of drugs, you will be A-OK. -okay. But you don't know that because all you know is indoctrination. And then you have the nerve to get on my platform and get on my comment board and spit what your oppressor and your enemy taught you. Good job. Good job, y'all. Good job. You know how to recite your oppressor. Good job. You know how to recite your enemy. Good job. Y'all better wake up. Y'all better wake up. They will never teach you anything to free yourself. They will never teach you anything to be healthy. They make trillions of dollars off you being sick. They make trillions of dollars out off you being mentally enslaved. Mentally enslaved. But y'all want to be clapped for because you sound smart. Negro sounding smart means you dumb. You want, you want to show me your degrees. Or I have this in bio. Okay, I got a biochemistry certification. That don't mean nothing. I've been to school. I learned that. That don't mean nothing. We around here flaunting our slavery certificates. I am a more of a slave than you. Look who signed my certificate. We got to wake up, man. We got to wake up, man. I love y'all, though. I know these teachings are very, very hard. I know it's something different. Y'all ain't never heard a lot of this stuff. I know. But look, all you have to do is do the deep research and look up everything I say. I'm not lying. I have never, ever, ever lied to y'all. I know the shit I say sound bizarre as hell, but the only reason why it sounds so bizarre is because you have been indoctrinated to believe so. This is programming that happened since you was in your mother's womb. She have listened and learned this bullshit. See that? This, these chemicals have molded and shaped you, your father. You come from this, this seed fertilizer, what you call sperm. This shit is embedded in the semen. And this molds and shape your personality. This molds and shape you are. And then you get out and you leave the wound. And then they stick this in your head. And then they put you in public school prison systems. And then you learn this again. So, so when you meet somebody like me. That's totally against the narrative. I sound batshit crazy. But I'm the one really telling the truth. <laughs> so I get it. That's why I'm not mad at y'all. I'm just a little frustrated. I'm just a little frustrated because it's like we are shifting. Knowledge is increasing. Knowledge and information is at your fingertips. You should have the common sense and you should know by now and you should have the spiritual discernment to know when something is right and know when something's wrong. I'm just saying, y'all. I'm just saying. Uh, do anybody got any questions so far as far as the calcium? And yes, it's called a CAC test. And like I was telling y'all, heart disease is the number one disease, so-called disease in America right now. Uh, matter of fact, if you look, all, mostly all people die of heart attack and uh, stroke. And you look at why, it's because calcium plaque buildup inside of the arteries of the heart. And you have to ask yourself where the calcium come from. Calcium, calcium is just like uh, the mucosa membrane. It comes to save the day, y'all. It comes to save the day. Now, if you want to, and I always have to give you a solution. If you do have too many calcium plaques built up inside the body you need to eat a bunch of citric foods lemons have natural ascorbic acid in them that will actually reach the cells before sugar and before calcium and it will dissolve cholesterol you don't want to dissolve all your cholesterol because you need cholesterol cholesterol is not only in control of protecting the body but it's in control of creating a cellular membrane it's in control of uh, transportation of uh, your melanin neurotransmitters it also creates a uh, neuron production you would die without cholesterol hdl and ldl cholesterol is very very essential uh, for the functionality of the cells in the body matter of fact every single cell in your body have a cholesterol receptor showing how much you need them without cholesterol you can't uh, create vitamin d3 without cholesterol you can't create testosterone you can't create a uh, pregnenolone you can't create progesterone you can't create estrogen so when you look at cholesterol cholesterol is essential but when you start 
introducing your bodies to certain types of environmental pollutants, you make cholesterol, you make calcium, you make mucus, and you make minerals overproduce themselves. And the overproduction of any of these things is very, very bad for you. So if you want to actually get rid of all the, cal the too much built up calcium in your system, go citric fruits, lemons, with seeds, organic lemons with seeds, organic key limes uh, with seeds, uh, oranges with seeds, grapefruits with seeds, uh, grapes with seeds. If you can find grapes with seeds because they out here, they extinct in all of our organic seeded fruits. But go more on the astringent side of nature. And uh, what you will see is astringent fruit or what you would call citric electrical fruit, fruits have very, very high amounts of what you would call ascorbic vitamin C acids in it. And ascorbates or ascorbic vitamin C acid actually neutralize and buffers out without calcifying calcium and cholesterol within the system. So all you got to do, man, look, have some discipline, love yourself and go on a 12 day citric fruit fast and it will change and go get your CAC number again, go get your calcium uh, and, and cholesterol checked again and the numbers will be down. Not saying that high numbers of cholesterol is, is bad because it's not at all. My cholesterol is very, very high, and I'm super healthy. What you're looking at is the total cholesterol uh, is what you need to be looking at. And not only that, the calcium that's evolved in the cholesterol. That's how you know if you bad, if, if it's bad or not. But I know some of the healthiest athletes. Y'all don't know, but I am uh, basically responsible for a lot of healthy uh, national football players and basketball players. Some of your favorite basketball players they come to me for health and nutrition. Some of your favorites uh, uh, NFL players come to me for health and nutrition. A lot of y'all know who a lot of them is, but I don't like to put my clients out there like that. But they cholesterol is high as hell, and I got them on plant-based diets, and they're some of the most healthy people that I know, some of the mus most muscular, cleanest people I know, and their cholesterol is high. So I don't want y'all to be real, real, you know, uh, scared about high cholesterol. They don't mean nothing. That's another propaganda that they did for they can sell statin. And, it's, and look, all this stuff is going to be in my book, y'all. I'm telling you, all of it is, but... Y'all just have to learn the right information. So if you if you do get your CAC test, which stands for culinary uh, uh, artery calcium plaque buildup, and if you see that it's over a thousand, that's the test. It shouldn't be over a thousand, and they show you. You'll be able to see it actually on the X-ray. You know, holler at me. I'll show you exactly what to do. But the first thing you need to do is dissolve it. And the best way to dissolve it is with citric fruits. Citric fruits is full of vitamin C. Vitamin C clinical name is called uh, ascorbic acid, y'all. And that's how you get rid of that. All right. Now, uh, I want to bring some of y'all on here and y'all can, uh, yes, fried food will increase LDL cholesterol. Fried, fried foods will increase LDL cholesterol. It really will. But you ain't supposed to be frying your foods. You know, every now and then I do eat some fried vegan food or some fried plant-based. But I'm here to tell you the truth. Even though I do eat that sometimes and I don't eat it all the time, I would never suggest you do it. You see what I'm saying? Y'all can call me on here and we can speak about some things. Let's see who we got. Who we got. Let me see who I can request on here. Please, I'm trying to bring somebody in. Let's see if it worked. Did it work? I think I messed it up. Y'all call in again. See if y'all can request to join again. And uh, we'll do five questions. Heart palpitations. Heart palpitations is driven by the thyroid gland. The thyroid and the adrenal glands is over the actual contractility of your heart, and that's the heartbeat. You also have something called the uh, sinoatrium. The sinoatrium is the heart's natural pacemaker that controls the rhythmic beat of the heart. But look, guess what that's controlled by? Calcium and magnesium in the thyroid. But you have to remember that the parathyroid and the thyroid actually controls calcium tonin, which actually brings calcium tonin from the bloodstream into your heart to constrict or to dilate the heart vessels to make sure that your heart is beating right. So in order to truly, truly heal heart palpitations, you have to heal the thyroid. I have something called the Essential Glandular Kit off the website. It's called the Essential Glandular Kit, and that's what we use to actually support the regular beating of the heart, all right? So it's called the Essential Glandular Kit, and I will do that on an all-citric and fruit diet, 21 days, and, and that'll do you some good. That'll do you some good. Let's see what we can get up in there. Let's see if we can get up in here. Peace, peace. Oh How you doing, God? Hi. <laughs> How you Mom, doing? Get get, over here. We need to see you. Get in the camera. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to work. <laughs> okay, blessings, blessings. How you doing? Right this. 
What, what's I'm your, good. What's your, hey, how y'all doing? Blessings, blessings. Shalom, Laka, fam. What y'all got for me? Oh, okay. Question. Hold on. Before oh, we get this started, God. what's y'all names and where y'all from? My name's Kendra. This is my mom, Marissa. Marissa. Hey, Miss Marissa. How you doing, mama? Where y'all from? Oh, well, yeah, my brother in the back. I'm starstruck. Let me tell you that. <laughs> I ain't no, I ain't no star. I ain't nobody. I'm yeah, y'all. I'm y'all. Look, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna keep it real, mama. I'm y'all servant. I'm here to serve my people. You are. You really yes. are. You, I um I started following you through my son, and I haven't missed the beat. I'm getting my life together. Oh, I praises. Had, uh, I was hit with um, breast cancer twice. Oh, you got it right now? Oh, no, I kick ass. That's I, what I'm talking about. You know what? I, I, I did every herb that you recommended. I then did all the dieting, all that stuff. I'm good. I'm all good. crazy. Y'all, you give yourself a round of applause. You breathe cancer, the breast cancer, the natural way. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm uh, six years um, um, in remission. Six years. All so praises. All I, praises today. I just recently showed her a video. You touched on breast cancer not too long ago with the feet list. Um, and mm -hmm. right now she is still taking medicine. We're kind of confused about the estrogen. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we're talking about this right now. but <laughs> No, it's, it's cool. So she's taking, they actually have her on medication, estrogen blocking medication. Okay, so right they got now. you on estrogen blocking medication. So let me guess, your your breast cancer was HER2 positive then, triple negative invasive carcinoma? Don't know. Oh, Don't okay. think so. I but never they do owned it. Whatever they was telling me, I didn't believe it. I didn't do chemo. Um, and they stuck that little pill on me because I was like, no chemo, no nothing. I was like, no, if I'm going to do it, I'm just going to, you know, go natural, you know. So but they do have you on the estrogen beta blocking uh, hormone uh, medicine, right? Uh -huh. So me on here, I can't tell you what to take and not to take, but I can't tell right. you what I would do if it was me. So okay. if it was me, if it was Yaki and they had me on a type of estrogen uh, hormone, uh, especially estrogen beta blocking hormone, what I would do is I would just basically do, I would find foods in the food kingdom that does what the medicine is trying to do in the first place, and that is suppress estrogen or stop estrogen from being produced by way of cholesterol and the ovaries. Uh, they didn't give you no mastectomy or nothing like, or hysterectomy or nothing like that. No. So you still got your whole reproductive organ. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what you, what I would do if I was you, uh, I was in this simple Google and just if you want to back it up, just type in uh type in scholarly our article. Just find foods that have just find foods that have more other hormones in it than it has estrogen producing That's hormones it. in it. Yeah. Yes. For instance, grapes is amazing. Grapes is yeah, amazing just because started, she just uh, she just showed me the latest one when you was talking about the grapes. So we went shopping and everything today, but yeah, I never give up. I take all my herbs and spices and natural shits, and I'm following you. Yes, and I'm glad it's working. So that's that's what I would do, but I would never ever tell anybody to stop taking the pharmaceutical medicines. Right, that right, stuff would right. get me locked up. But if it was me, if it was me, I would I would tell them to wean me off of it. And while it's weaning me off of it, I make sure I find foods that doesn't convert right. over into estrogen or estrogen like molecules. <laughs> you already winning. You already beat cancer. So now it's just because what they're trying to say is even though the cancer is gone, if you start eating things that have a high estrogen in it again, it's going to cause another tumor to proliferate. That's what they're trying to say. Right. So in order to keep the tumor from proliferating, let's put you on this estrogen beta blocking hormone medicine for the rest of your life. So what I would do if it was me, I would just I would just find foods that's not high in estrogen and start eating those things. And then once I'm metabolically completely cleaned out, I will start introducing other foods back into my diet and just watch my estrogen hormone levels. Okay. So for me and her, for me, so would I be doing the same thing? Because of course I want to prevent, you know, going down the same path as my mom and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So do I, I'm 31 right now. Do I stay off estrogen food as well? Or how no, so, happen? so this is what I would do if I was you, because you know, a lot, of, I know they teach a lot of this stuff is gene driven, but that's not true. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's the lifestyle and the eating habits and the traditions that have been passed down to our actual people, you know, uh, that, that is, that's causing the gene. So even if you had a cancer gene, a cancer gene, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Her name is, An it's a lady named Angelina Jolene. Yeah, you know, I know right. what I'm talking about. It's a famous actor. She actually got her breast taken because she had the uh, triple negative gene, cancer, right. breast cancer gene in her. So she let them cut her breasts off. You see right. what I'm saying? Yeah. But I know plenty of other people that have got their breasts taken off because they had that cancer is causing gene and they still ended up with breast cancer without their breasts. Yes. Or, so, or, or different cancer. Yeah, I, um, exactly. I would, yeah, I wouldn't got, I wouldn't do that. And it's not, it's not in my genes.
You know how they so, do that? So that's good that it's not in your genes. But yeah. even if it was in your genes, genes only turn themselves on due to the, the expression or the experimental environment that you put the genes in. So if you or if you have cancer genes and you're living in an alkaline environment, it's impossible for that envelope or that or, or that capsule that's holding the gene to break open for that gene to express itself. So it's not really about the genes, it's about the environment that you express the genes in. So if you're living in an alkaline environment, you eat in alkaline foods and you're not eating foods that causes the actual cells to coagulate and need to detoxify then you won't see the you won't see cancer being expressed in the body anyway because exactly. if you look at what cancer We're really is yes cancer is nothing but the body trying it's the last stage of detoxification Patient, True, yeah. truly right. so if you don't need to detoxify then you the body won't give itself cancer to take that metabolic way out for for you can create these tumors tumors are nothing but trash bags right. full of trash that's all that it is, is. yeah but, but I'm, pr I'm, pr I'm proud of you though mama keep up this great job <laughs> Make sure you stay on your grapes. If you can find them grapes seeded, oh, please so do hard. seeded grapes it's if you so can. Hard. We can't yeah. find them nowhere. I, went to, I gotta go to the farmers market because it ain't in the yeah. stores. Yes, please awesome. find seeded grapes, please if okay. you can. You know. Okay, one more one more question for me. So I know, uh, one actually two things really quick. I know some people say it's not good to blend your fruit because if some mm. when you eat the fruit, the saliva in your mouth like breaks it down. Yeah, the trypsin. It's, it's called it's called a, it's called a trypsin enzyme. So trypsin will break it down in something called amulose. So amulose and trypsin breaks down fruits and vegetables in uh -huh. your mouth by way of the salivary glands. Okay, because I was on your website and I was looking at your uh, food uh, recommendation and all that stuff, and it said to make it a smoothie. So I wasn't sure if I should just throw all my fruit in, blend it up, and drink so it. Or so I love fruit juices. There are certain fruit juices that you that I wouldn't recommend if you detoxing or if you have diabetes. For instance, grapes. Grapes, when you when you take the skin off the grapes, it raises the fructose level so high. When you drink that juice, it raises the blood sugar. So I wouldn't juice grapes, but juicing is good. That's H3O2, that's structured water. You actually need that water. So make sure you can juice as much as you want. But just know when you do juice, you, you're getting rid of all the fiber in your actual fruit. I don't, so, I don't even want to juice. No, I don't want to juice at all. I, I, I want to blend everything together. So now, now that's everything. a good thing too, but I'm saying there's nothing wrong with juicing. I drink 42 okay. ounces of juice every day. Okay. Just make sure you matching it though. So uh, mm -hmm. if you blend your food, you still get the fibers and you need those fibers because the fibers mm -hmm. are good for the nerves, <laughs> The fibers help you defecate more and moves your digestive system and it's good and so you have something called prebiotics probiotics and postbiotics uh your probiotics or good bacteria that's in your gut they need to eat the food the food that they eat is the prebiotics which is the fiber that you get from your fruits and vegetables once the probiotics eat the prebiotics which is the fiber they come up with these essential enzymes and minerals called postbiotics so you need those fibers fibers are very very essential so what i recommend you do is juice but eat your fruits whole as well well. So juice your fruits and eat or drink and eat your fruits. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Okay, that's it. All right, oh. and then uh, the protein, the one more thing, protein, <laughs> protein, um, plant, plant protein based, whatever. I am I okay with that? So it depends on, so only plant, only plant protein, protein that I see a lot of people eating is pea protein. But this is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. You don't, if you mm -hmm. just eat, eat solids and eat fruits, yeah, right. you will get all the proteins you need that from that. Gotcha. If I was you, I would stay away from the the, pro, the plant protein powder. You don't need it. If you okay. eat your fruits and vegetables, then you can bypass all of that. Okay, I was just trying to do like if I'm on a rush, you know, <laughs> if I'm running, going somewhere really quick, I just throw a little protein shake. No, just eat, a, just eat a just eat a eat a salad. That's okay. it. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll oh. stop being lazy. <laughs> all right. So look, y'all take care of yourself again, Mama. I'm super super proud of you. I'm super I'm proud, proud of you. It's you. You did it. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. All right. All right, so I'll talk to y'all soon. I will. I'm coming. I'm doing a seminar in Vegas probably in June. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. We're going to be there. <laughs> yes. So make sure y'all say peace, love, light, and healing to y'all family. All right, y'all. Uh, they still on there. I think something is going on. Y'all going to have to hang up, y'all. Dang, what is going on? What is going on? If y'all can't hang up. I don't know what's going on right now. Okay, they just hang up, y'all. Y'all can climb on in. Right. Who else got some questions? 
who got who else got some questions can y'all say if you can still hear me and see me type in some nines i think they jiggling wires y'all i think they jiggling wires okay i see y'all can hear me all y'all gotta do is to talk to me just join the live if you join the live i'm picking the first people i see that's what I'm doing. I just added somebody. Let's see if they pull in or not. Now it ain't even let me add people. I don't know, man. Instagram might be messing with me. It's too much healing going on. I agree with you. No fake vegan foods. I agree with that, brother. What's crazy, y'all? Y'all know the join button. It don't exist no more. Like, they took it off or something. the hell going on well look i guess y'all can ask questions i know it's freezing y'all y'all can ask questions in the comment board y'all they took my join button off let's see i'm gonna try somebody else let's see if this person works Peace, peace, God. How you feeling, brother? Thanks, brother. Yeah, how you doing today? Man, I'm doing good, brother. How you feeling, King? I'm doing well. I'm out for a walk, taking my pups for a walk. Okay, I see you walk. You walking the puppies? Okay. All right. What's going on with you, brother? I appreciate you, man. I'm um, I've been I've been checking you out for a minute, and um, you know, it's a couple of things I've been having to deal with on my own. You know, trying to figure it all out, but I'm just ready to take it all the way to a whole nother level. So. Um, get right to it. What would you recommend for, um, so type two diabetes with uh, neuropathy? My foot. Okay. So I already had one of my toe, my um, toes, one of my big toes, uh, amputated, uh, two years ago, and you know I've made some adjustments and whatnot. I'm down to two thirty seven now. I was you know a bigger guy before, much bigger. I'm six four, so um, I just want to get this neuropathy under um control and obviously the rest of my circulation in my body all right so when you're looking at neuropathy neuropathy is dealing with acids or acidosis of what you will call the nervous system uh you see when you whenever you have to get your your, your toes cut off or your leg amputated that's poor circulation and the reason why circulation is poor with dealing with diabetes is because you have too many glucose sugars in the blood and glucose sugar is a macro uh, uh essential molecule so it's very big inside the blood and it actually stops blood from properly flowing so uh what you need to do is you need to figure out how to clean up the cardiovascular system to get blood flowing properly throughout the whole entire cardiovascular system and you need to clean up the acidosis to stop it from chewing away at the nerves and that will stop you from having all that pain with, with, ne with neuropathy so what i suggest you do is you need to go on my site and what i would do is i would get the geogenetic therapeutic package level one and with the level one it will come with the pancreas support kit that'll clean up the pancreas that it also clean up the adrenal glands the adrenal glands is in control of what you will call the autonomic nervous system the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system and and these are things that actually talks with your nervous system, your vagus nerve, your 10 cranial nerves. That'll help you out. Once you cleanse all that metabolic acidosis off the nerves, you will stop feeling that pain of neuropathy. But now you still got to worry about the circulation and you getting poor circulation in your lower extremities. What comes with that geogenetic therapeutic pack is level one is our circulatory high and circulatory ho low. So I would, if it was me, I would do an all fruit diet. I know that they say fruit is bad for diabetes. Clinically, this has been proven to be a whole lot because when you eat high fruits, it's high fructose. Fructose don't need the pancreas to be essential for the for uh, be essential fuel for the body. It goes the lipid route. It goes towards the liver. When you eat vegetables and you eat meat, that's what needs the pancreas. We need to give the pancreas a break so we can heal the pancreas, but you still need to get your essential amino acids and sugars for vitality. An all fruit diet is what I would do if it was me. And on top of that all fruit diet for 21 days i make sure i get the geogenetic therapeutic level one package off the site and then when you get the geogenetic uh, therapeutic package level one put all of your symptomologies in the pre-form and then we will customize the package to support all the systems and the detoxification that you actually need mm. and if and, and and if you don't if you don't believe me 
All you have to do is go on this page and just type in Yaki and diabetes. Uh, there's a bunch of people off of insulin pens. There's a bunch of people off of insulin pumps. I mean, diabetes is, is very, very easy to reverse when you change diet and you detoxify. And you can look this up on my page yourself, or you can go to my YouTube and just type in Yaki and diabetes and they'll pop up. But that's what you need to do. So go go the fruit route. Don't be scared of the propaganda. Now you, now you are going to have to play the game, though, where you eat certain fruits and you check your blood sugar because there's certain fruits that's going to raise your blood sugar more than others. Grapes. Grapes that's been juiced will raise your blood sugar. Bananas. Bananas is very, very high on the glycemic index, so you don't want to do bananas uh, whatsoever. There's certain oranges. When you eat oranges or drink orange juice, I, I tend to see my clients blood sugar and their glucose level rises and raises high. But other than oranges, most of your other citric fruit actually regulates blood sugar. Apples regulates blood sugar. So you got a lot of fruits that actually regulates the blood sugar because you're not using the pancreas. The only reason right. why you need the pancreas because you have something called the islands of Langerhans, and in the side of the islands of Langerhans, you have the alpha cells and the beta cells and the delta cells. The beta yep. cells inside the pancreas is what creates insulin, and what insulin is, it acts as a key to open up the cell for you can get glucose past the cellular membrane structure. It got to pass through cholesterol, and the only thing that will allow it into the cells past cholesterol is insulin. So if you're not eating nothing that's going to alert insulin to be used, then we don't need to use the pancreas. We can heal it, and then you can worry about about everything else later and mostly we be seeing that people with diabetes have a fluke worm inside the pancreas so i'm gonna have to deworm you as well but once you heal yourself and you detoxify and get all that metabolic acidosis out of your body brother you'll notice that your nerves will feel better better again as well so you just you, you suffer from metabolic acidosis and that's all diabetes is in the first place it's a it's a metabolic problem man it's like a met metabolic syndrome but you can get rid of that geogenetic therapeutic package level one all fruit diet make sure that you go to CVS or you get you an electronic uh, blood blood sugar test off of uh, Amazon. And it, yeah. as soon as you eat a fruit, wait an hour, check your blood. It's, it's going to go up because when you eat anything, it raises blood sugar. There's nothing on this earth that you can eat that won't raise the blood sugar. The whole thing right. you're looking for is how long it stay raised. If it stay raised more than two hours, two and a half hours, you don't want that fruit no more. Put it to the side, test your other fruit. Then what you do is once you find a good six to eight fruits that doesn't raise your blood sugar for a long time, then the fruits that you're going to be on while you're cleansing yourself on the earth. It works every single time, brother. I appreciate it. I definitely am going to go that route. Um, cause I was also told that, so the, the, ber the, the is it true that berries, like the strawberries, blueberries, mm -hmm. blackberries, or like you said, just keep testing each one of them yeah, separately? Keep testing each one. But what we noticed, King, we noticed that berries don't really raise the blood sugar, especially blueberries. Blueberries actually help regulate blood sugar. Now, I have seen blackberries raise blood sugar for about two hours, but it regulated after two and a half hours. But once you get okay. into like raspberries, strawberries, and blueberries, they don't raise your blood sugar like that. Okay, remember, that's it. everything. Everything you eat, King, is going to raise your blood sugar until insulin works. So even if you eat things, uh, even if you eat something that don't have that much uh, glycemic index to it, it's still going to raise your sugar. It's not if it raises your sugar or not. It's how long it stay raised. That's the issue. That's the key, right? All right, well, I appreciate it. I'm definitely going to go on the site and get that, uh, put that order in and whatnot. And I'll definitely be tapping in with you more. Um, and I, I definitely want to chat, tap in some more, too, because a couple other things I got going on mm -hmm. um, that may be helpful to the community at large. Yes, you know, or just to help those that may want to do some things business-wise so uh just okay. check me out and you see what i got going on and i appreciate all right, you uh, all right i got you i got your name on here i'm gonna check you out i'm gonna put something in your inbox so we can get in contact with each other uh brother just let the uh, people know where you from and hit them with a peace love light and healing for me oh definitely peace light love and healing uh, i'm in uh southern virginia danville virginia right now i'm from new jersey originally all my jersey heads out right, there appreciate hey, that shout out to all... new jersey and shout out to virginia guy we're going to get healed together. Thank you. Let's do it, brother. Let's do it together. Peace, King. Peace. That's a good brother right there, y'all. That's a good brother. Uh, you, I think it's an X on there, brother. It's an X. You got to click that X. It's in like your top That's, left corner. Got you. I see. You. Got it. All right. All right. Peace, King. Talk to you soon. All right. Who else we got? Who else we got? I got three more, y'all. I'm going to get up out of here. I got to hit the gym. I'm at this hotel, but... I'm going to hit the gym now. I got to hit the gym, and I'm, I'm doing full body workout today, full body, and I'm running three miles. 
You know what I'm saying? I, I, been, I ate twice today because I had a bunch of meetings. So I had to eat twice. So I got to go work all this off. You know what I'm saying? Peace, peace, goddess. How you doing? I'm well. How about you? I'm doing good. What's your name and where you from? My name is Celeste. I'm from Florida. Florida. You know, Florida, my second home now. Listen, I hear you say that all the time. I'm like, when is this man coming to Florida? I'm always in Florida. Look, I just got back from Florida. Right now, I'm in an A, but I literally just left from Florida. I'm going back there in a week. I stay in Florida. I love Florida. Please tell me when you're coming in, and I'll meet you well. <laughs> I got you. So what's going on with you guys? Talk to me. Awesome. Um, Actually, so I've been following you for a very long time. I actually even have my mom watching you and everything. So this mm -hmm. is actually more for my mom than it is, per se, for me. Okay. Um, just recently, I actually even uh, DM'd you about it. She was having really bad stomach pains for about two weeks, and then mm -hmm. we ended up having to go to the hospital, and we found out that she actually had um, a mass in her, like, in her they said it was a mask blocking her small intestine so okay. they ended up having to actually have surgery and they removed it but they are doing it taking it to pathology to find out if it is it's cancer is not or not they did also say they took out some of her lymphs as well because they said it was uh connected to some of the lymphs I guess yeah that's what happening. if you look at the gut most of 90 percent of your so-called immune system or what you would call your lymphatic system is called the payer patches or they call it the goat which is gut associated lymphatic tissues they actually inside of the the gut so most of your so-called immune system or what i'm going to call the lymphatic defense system is in the gut so whenever you, you remove anything of the guts you're going to compromise the lymph system so uh whether we find out that it's cancerous or not since they did do that surgery we're gonna have some type of calcium and cholesterol build up because it's gonna have to naturally repair that spot uh did they say she had any type of prolapse colons prolapse no they said um they ended up just taking out um i think they said a part of the colon that was um it was a small i think the small intestines that was uh -huh. um that was uh inflamed okay. they drained some of her um small intestines that was causing the backup because her belly was swelling it wasn't going down for so a while. she was retaining a bunch of fluid okay yeah because honestly she couldn't eat much of anything um she only was eating little salt little things like applesauce stuff like that fruit mm -hmm. and then we ended up having to go because her stomach wasn't going down it just kept getting worse um they did say like i said they took out they they said they thought maybe they would have to um possibly uh, take out other parts of the colon but it turned out that everywhere else felt fine they didn't find any other like masses anywhere okay they also came out well as good as well okay so if it was me what i would do is uh while i'm healing i will go on more of a high watery fruit and vegetable diet with a bunch of liquids all right and the reason why i'm doing this is because her actual intestines need to heal so mm -hmm. you don't want to put too many hard foods in there that's very hard to break down mm -hmm. uh, i also will put her on a parasite elimination kit to cleanse any parasites fungus bacteria mold that's building up in the gut so i would do things like fruit watery fruits i do things like watery vegetables and uh, i will increase her liquids to about like 45 to 55 ounces of liquids a day just mm -hmm. to be very to flush all it because she's going to be inflamed from the surgery and then again calcium and cholesterol is going to come come there to try to really heal up that surgical spot that they was at so she need to go on a liquid diet and what i mean by liquid i don't mean that it need to be like strictly liquid but i drink a lot of liquids 50 to 55 ounces of liquids a day and i eat watery fruits and watery vegetables watery vegetables are things like romaine uh, another watery vegetable is watercress another watery vegetable is uh bok choy watery mm -hmm. fruits uh is things like uh watermelon uh another watery fruit is uh your green apples them are very watery things that aren't going to take too much to actually break down so we're trying to give our intestines as much rest as possible and the best way to give our intestines rest is by cleaning out all the metabolic acidosis that's in the intestines and eating food that's not going to cause uh, a very hard obstruction while it's going through our lives and then what i think she should do is really cleanse her guts out if that was me i would get my three bitters Okay. The three bitters will cleanse her out. Not only will the three bitters cleanse out the gut, but the three bitters are toners, detoxifiers, and strengtheners. So it's going to detoxify and cleanse the gut. It's going to tone up the cells of the gut, and it's going to strengthen that elastic part of the cell or that cholesterol ring that creates the cellular membrane of the gut. And that's what I would do. And that will cleanse out her lymphatic system uh, as well. Now, as far as her missing you know, pieces of her gut, I don't know what really they took off. To yeah, out, so you have to eat. Next time we went. So yeah, and then just email it to me. Email it to me at bloodwork.yakiawaken at gmail.com. 
bloodwork.yachtkeyawaken at gmail.com and I can look and see what they took out and if they connected anything to something else and then I'll send y'all an actual email back. But that's what I would do if I was her. The three bitters and most definitely uh, hydrate that gut area and do a watery fruits. And a good watery fruit is cucumber. That's a good watery okay. fruit. You and know? she was eating a whole lot of, and that's why I say I don't know because we, we've been following you for a while so we do like um, the bladder whack, we do uh, budak root, we take all of those things like and we're on and all of that stuff. But then again, like it just came out of nowhere. She wasn't having any signs of it. So we wasn't sure. But I did notice like she is having a tougher time with being able to actually, as you, I know you said go up to like 40 to 50 ounces of yeah. liquid. Can we, is there a certain number we should like aim for? Because now she has a, like a really tough time with even just taking in anything really. Like she gets full really fast. Yeah, really fast. Like, oh, so I wonder, I wonder, right. So start, no, no, I wouldn't do no, no, I will, no the minimum I would do is thirty ounces. I wouldn't go lower than thirty ounces. I would. Okay. And then see if she can build up to that. But send me that send me that paperwork though. That way I can see if they connected her stomach to her large intestine, you know, and they got rid of the pyloric sphincter. I don't really know the structure of the surgery, so I couldn't even tell you why she can't eat or drink that much. Because if they took out something, they had to connect something with stomach. It's kind of like a a gastric bypass. I want to yeah. know what they connected something to. And I was thinking of asking them that the entire time because I stayed with her throughout the, the, the process of the whole thing, but I didn't actually get the chance to ask just because I was wondering if they like took out her duodenum because she's she's eating, but it's going through her so fast. I don't think it's actually giving her time. Yeah, see, I see you really been listening. Took out her I, duodenum. <laughs> no, I've been listening. I'm telling you, you be listen. watching. Be, even her, she'll watch her stuff and she'll send it to me. And I started sending, I initially was one sending it to her. So like I said, we watch her stuff a lot. I have people who ask me about like healing and I try to like reference back to what I remember from what you tell me. But that was the only thing that was kind of like, I guess kind of worrying me a little bit because we do have to like patch up her, her uh, cut and stuff. But then it's just, she's not, what she is eating, she's not holding on to. Like literally five or six minutes later, she's already pooping it back out. So yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. So yeah, send me that. Let me check it out, and then I'll be able to give you some more information. I don't know what's going on with how they structured and and, and did the surgery on her bowels. You know, so I, I want to look at that, and then I'll be able to really uh really help. Okay, you out. bet I would definitely send it to you. I'll even send you because I went online to look at all the stuff that they did to her. Like they got all the tests and the blood work and everything. So I'll even send you pictures of that because that literally gave everything like what she yeah, was Yeah, send it to me. Let everything. me check it out. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And then out. when we go to the actual follow-up, the follow-up isn't until the 12th, but I'll send you and tell you what they tell me that they actually ended up taking out of her. Because okay. it did. I couldn't find, at least maybe I don't know how to read medical paperwork very well, but I couldn't find exactly where they said what yeah. they took out. Okay. Yeah, see, I'm an expert at reading it. So send it to me, I'll read it for you, and I'll show you. And I'll send back notes on it for the next time you know how to read it yourself. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Uh, Say peace, love, light, and healing to your family, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Peace, love, and light, and healing, y'all. Peace. I see a bunch of people on here uh, that have a lot to say that's having uh, hateful remarks. I see somebody said they hate fuck niggers and stuff like that. Look, don't worry about these racist people. I can't block everybody. Pay attention to the mission. Make sure you got your pen and your pad and you writing around this, you writing down this education. This is what's pissing them off. What's pissing them off is we are healing as a people. What's pissing these people off is we are unifying. What's pissing these people off is we're taking health and wealth into our own hands. What's pissing these people off is we're beginning to love ourselves and loving our brothers and sisters like we got, like we love ourselves. So don't worry about the hatred. We get threats from them all the time. We get racial slurs in my inbox all the time, daily. That's the reason why I got security and that's the reason why we read past that bullshit and we stick to learning and healing and loving one another so don't let these people get y'all distracted this is a distraction to keep y'all from learning y'all so don't let that distract y'all all right don't let that distract y'all whatsoever we ain't worried about it we healing peace peace hello peace peace goddess how you doing Hi, I'm sorry. I'm not feeling good right now, but you, you still you still gotta put your face in the phone now. Okay, well I'll come back. <laughs> All right, got it. All right. It's the top uh left. It's an X. All right, y'all. Who else we got? Y'all, if y'all get on here, y'all have to show y'all face. I want to make sure I'm not talking to an FBI agent. So that was my third one. I got two more, y'all. I got two more. Two more. 
<laughs> peace, peace. Blessings, blessings. Peace, God. What's up, Chief? How you doing, man? I'm doing good, God. How you feeling? Well, oh, well. Appreciate What's going on with you, King? What's your name and where you from, man? Oh, I'm Nico, man. I'm uh, from Atlanta. I'm from Atlanta. Oh, you from Atlanta? You from the ATL? You did, you did. Yes, sir. How you uh, so I'm not, I'm actually not calling for myself. I'm calling for a friend. Okay. Uh, she has been dealing with, uh, I think it's like her, she want to get in the camera. Is it the left or the right side? Okay, so the left side of her body. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you speak on it. Hey, if she speaks, she got to show her face. If not, we can't do it. <laughs> All right. All right, she getting up. <laughs> All right, come on with it. We got to hurry up, though, because we got one more. We got one more. Okay. Peace, peace. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Well, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm good. What's going on? Would you talk to me? Um, For years, I've had inflammation in my uh, lymph node right here. Okay. And it's progressed to monthly cycle, probably around a month or so, of, like, swelling on my left side, um, like, joint pain, just overall low energy, um, and right now I'm experiencing a lot of like inflammation kind of, it's almost like my whole left side is like nauseous. Okay. So. I got a question. Or, or you have any type of expectorants out of your skin? Do you see any rashes coming from these areas? Anything like that? Is it, it like when you touch your skin, do it feel like you touch it's pins and needles in those areas? Um, not too much. I have had some like facial skin issues. Okay. Um, but not like on site where it hurts the most. But I would say it's like tender to touch right there. All right, tender to touch right there. Uh, so do you get a lot of swelling in that area? A bunch of swelling? Or do yes, definitely swelling here. And then I'm seeing it on the right side now too. All right, so the way I know right off back is probably your kidneys. Your kidneys oh. is not functioning properly and you're retaining too many liquids. And since it is on your left side, that is the left kidney so we need to get those adrenal glands online and we need to get you properly urinating right if you can urinate right you can get rid of all of that metabolic liquids that's inside the body which will actually get rid of the inflammation so what we need to be looking at is your foods if i was you i would eat a predominantly alkaline diet meaning you have to get off meats you have to get off proteins and stay away from bread that way you can alkalize your body so if i was you i'd do a 21 day fruit and vegetable fast 50 50 uh, i do 50 percent fruits 50 percent vegetables and then what you need to do is get the kidney and adrenal kit especially if you got swelling in the lymph nodes because then you, you actually cleanse the thoracic duct so that means that's your whole entire left side your left side that's being swelling up so we need to go out there the kidneys and the adrenals the adrenals are in control of opening up what you would call the metabolic pathways where you can flush your cells and it's called uh, acetylcholine nesterase that's the actual enzyme that you need to dilate your lymphatic system to open up your kidneys and your nephrons to get you to flush all that fluids out whenever you start attracting fluids in the body the fluids are coming in your body to go towards a certain area to neutralize and to put out a fire to what you call acid or acidosis so the best way to get rid of acidosis is using your best fire extinguisher and your fire extinguisher will be your lymphatic system but it seems like your lymphatic system is already working too hard and what it's doing is it's getting swelled up in your lymph nodes and your lymph nodes are swelling up because you they don't have nowhere to go. So the only way to relieve that volumetric pressure is by opening up the kidney. So the kidney and adrenal kit off the website, do a 21 day fruit fast, right? You're going to increase your liquid intake to about 55 ounces of water a day. If you start seeing a bunch of swelling, knock it down to 40 ounces of water a day and make sure that you get you some deep tissue massages, no smoking, no drinking, no meat, no dairy, no nuts. Just do straight fruits and vegetables and you will start seeing all of that go down and drain. Now you might feel a bunch of kidney pain. That's because we're going to be working on those adrenals and those kidneys are going to be holding a bunch of acids trying to get rid of them. But that's what you need to do. The kidney and adrenal kit that'll help you out a whole lot. All right. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's all good. Talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh-huh. Uh, for y'all that's on here being disrespectful, I'm not tolerating that bullshit at all. I'm not tolerating that bullshit at all. We won't do that. If I see y'all being disrespectful again on my platform, whether you black, white, blue, purple, or brown, you will be blocked. I'm for my people. I'm always for my people. I'm here to heal my people first. But if anybody outside of my people want to come to us and get healed, they are at liberty to do so. And I won't let any of y'all jeopardize that. That's a gift that I got from God. And that gift is for the entire world. And if you can't respect that, you can keep your disrespectful ass from off my platform. Straight up.
up. And this is coming from a pro-black man that's all about my people, that put hundreds of thousands of dollars in my community, that steps up and speak for my community every day. But you won't embarrass me and make me look bad on my own platform. We not here for hatred speech. And if y'all love me, that shit will get me kicked off this channel. That's what got my YouTube channel kicked off. So don't get on here jeopardizing my channel with y'all hate speeches. Love yourself and respect yourself enough to not be able to tear down another people to still feel good, family. We got to stop that. She wasn't coming with no smoke. She coming to get healed. Disrespectful sales. Come on, man. We got to do better, family. Who else we got on here? Yeah, we got to stop that, man. Some things are just unacceptable, and that was unacceptable, family. You can love your black God self and your black God itself without hating okay. anybody else. Okay, give me one second. <laughs> so I still okay. gotta wait on you guys. Come on now. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Cause I really got a question. Hold on. Okay. We get. Okay. Okay, I have a question. So. Hold on. First, what's your name and where you from? Okay, I, my name is Shay. I'm from Houston. Houston in the building. What's up with it, Shay? Okay, sorry, I got toothpaste on my head. I got a pimple. Okay, so you draw, you draw, you drawing that puss out with the toothpaste? <laughs> yeah. That's that's old school right there, goddess. That's old school. Okay, right, what's up? Talk so, to us. so about three weeks ago, I woke up and I woke up dizzy and I was feeling like the lethargic and it's like a wave of depression like hit me but when I woke up I couldn't breathe so I was able to calm down I called my mom she told me to get some electrolytes in my body and I was able to calm down so about a week later it happened again but this time I couldn't calm down I had to go to the emergency room because it felt like I was about to faint yeah was so your heart beating fast Yes, my heart was beating fast. Sound I couldn't like that breathe. You were having an anxiety attack, right? You, but but my right. head, my head, it was like it was like when I woke up, my head was like cloudy, and it was like yeah, it you felt know, like it's a panic like, attack. You're not getting enough blood, so when you have a panic attack, and I'm gonna let you finish, but I'm telling you what it is. It's anxiety or a panic attack. When you have a panic attack, your body is going to a state of flight or flight, and it's your thyroid and your adrenal glands is very fatigued mm -hmm. and it's tripping with you. So what happened is all the blood inside of your body run towards your extremities, which is your legs and your feet, and you stop blood circulation from going to your brain, so it gets you real nauseated, and it gets you very, very mm -hmm. hydrated. Mm -hmm. Not only that, the thyroid get tripped, and it speeds up something called the sino atrium of the heart, so your heart starts beating real fast. Then cortisol and adrenaline starts being released in the bloodstream, so it puts you, it kicks on ne epinephrine and norepinephrine, and you start getting a dry mouth, cotton mouth, a metallic taste in your mouth, hot, lightheaded, fogginess in the brain, your heart, mm -hmm. speed, your heart speed up, you get this tightness in your gut. That's because the body is trying to force you into either running or defending yourself. Usually, this happens when you are very, very dehydrated and the mm -hmm. thyroid is trying to get iodine and calcium from somewhere. So I bet you the problem mm -hmm. is dehydration and you're missing minerals because when you are not dehydrated, that means you're not getting the right amount of electrolytes that you need to actually regulate the entire molecular structure of the body. So your issue would be dehydration and mineral deficiency. So I can tell you right now, you need more magnesium. Magnesium keeps you calm. Remember, magnesium dilates the blood vessels. Magnesium gives you proper blood flow. Magnesium gives you proper actual hydration because it helps you relax and open up the cells to get the mineral salts you need into the cells. So you need, you need mineralization and you need hydration. The best way to do that is called the Essential Glandular Kit off my website is what you will need and you will need to start a juice regimen and if you got a pen and a pad i want you to write down my favorite juice this is the juice that healed me i created it myself the concoction of it and i healed myself of all the diseases i was suffering from i had a heart attack when i was 21 i was a uh, 264 pounds i'm only five six i had scar okay. tissue on my heart my kidneys was failing i had diabetes and erectile dysfunction and this will heal me so tell me when you're ready I'm ready. I'm writing it down. All right. So I want you to do seven green apples. And this you're gonna do this daily. 
Okay. You're going to do seven green apples. You're going to do one stock of celery, one stock of celery. It should have at least six to seven limbs on it with the leaves. You're going to juice this every day. This is going to me this is going to remineralize your whole entire body. Okay. So the apples is going to strength is going to stretch the cells and get all the toxins out of the cells. The celery sticks is going to give you all of the, the, the bowel salts that you need. It's full of natural sodium that's very good for you. Okay. All so right. that the apples and celery stick? No, no, we still got a little, little bit more to go. We got a little okay. bit more to go. You're gonna okay. use you're gonna use a pinch of cilantro. What cilantro is going to do is remove all of those different metals from the cells, whether it's nanobot technology, whether it's mercury, whether it's an overproduction of free unbinded iron, that's going to remove it from the cells. Okay. That's cilantro. You're going to use a handful of parsley, parsley leaf, a handful. The parsley leaf is going to open up the actual tubules and it's going to open up the nephrons of the kidneys for you can filtrate out, for you can filtrate out properly. Okay. All right, you're going to use only a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. That's going to cleanse out the vasal. It's going to make sure it opens and dilates uh, the, the artery walls and the, and the vascular walls to help blood flow and, and pump very good. And you're going to use a thumb of ginger. You should get organic ginger. Everything you get organic, never get nothing that's not organic. Get a thumb of ginger, skin the actual ginger, and put the ginger in the juicer, uh, the juicer as well. All right? Okay. All right, now, hold on. You got two cucumbers without the skin. That's going to help you hydrate more. Cucumbers are more, one of your most hydrative fruits on the planet. And then a whole lemon with the skin. Last but not least, a whole lemon with the skin. Okay, hold on. If you do this every day, this should make you, uh, you should produce at least, at least uh, uh, 45 ounces of juice. If not, just add, add mineral water. What I mean by mineral water is uh, uh, alkaline spring water. You can get, my favorite one is Pana, it's called Aquapana, and you're gonna add it to that juice to fill up to your 40 ounces, and you're gonna drink that a day. It should give you 40 ounces, because it give me that. But if not, you're gonna pour that in there, that's gonna add up to 40 ounces. You're gonna drink that every single day. Do that with the essential glandular kit, and I promise you that'll go away. Uh, uh, my boy- do both. Yeah, do both if you could. My boy Phil uh Co Cofer, uh, he a basketball player. He uh actually suffered from uh uh very bad thyroid issues and basically the same things that was going on with him. I put him on my geogenetic therapeutic package level one and put him on this exact juice diet that I'm giving you right now, and I had him completely healed up in like three months. So it's most well, definitely possible I did go and I hear myself on the same thing. I did go get testing too. Um my thyroids, it was a little low. Um, I bet you, I, look, see, I said the thyroid. I know you, you, I never, I don't even know you. You see, I, yeah. I know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, my vitamin D was like 14 and my liver, it was called the, my liver, the, it was something to do with my, li, my, uh, my liver. It was really, really, really high. Yeah, your liver. So you're talking about the fats around your liver, what they call sugar deposits around the liver. We can get rid of all of that, but the thyroid controls everything you just said. So if you do what I just said and you start cleansing and we get, and you probably need to do a liver cleanse, but the good thing about this juice, that juice cleanse the liver as well. And if you go on an all red apple juice uh, diet, that it cleans out your, your, your liver uh, also. And then you got herbs. You have a good herb called milk thistle. Milk thistle is very, very good to cleanse the liver. Just find some milk thistle capsules. That's very good to cleanse your liver out. Burdock root and dandelion root and dandelion leaf is very good to cleanse up the liver as well. So in a sauna, if you can find you a sauna, you can buy a sauna for $300 off of Amazon, a steam sauna, and get in there 30 minutes a day. That'll help clean out all the metabolic waste and open up the bowel ducts of the liver as well. Uh, the liver is one of your largest detoxification tissues or organs inside your body, so you have to cleanse the liver as well. But if you do everything I told you, you're going to be a-okay. You just got to get on it now. And just stay off, have... meats, stay off of uh -huh. meats, stay off of meats, stay off of dairy, and don't be drinking no soda pops and stuff like that while you're cleansing. And, don't, and, and to me personally, I would never go back to it once you healed anyway, but definitely while you're trying to cleanse your body, don't, don't do none of that. Do you think it has something to do with my fibroids? So you got fibroids? Yeah, I have like seven. You posted, look in the, look in the camera, goddess. <laughs> Don't you think you should have led with that? <laughs> that's, that's important information. So <laughs> it's your thyroid and your pituitary again. You have to remember, so the pituitary gland is 
The pituitary gland is what governs the actual reproductive system of a woman and a male. Uh, you have pituitary stimulating hormones that produces prolactin. Prolactin actually gives you your breast milk. Also, your pituitary stimulating hormone from the pituitary gland is what produces estrogen and progesterone in the body by way of uh, calcium and by way of the cholesterol. These things then send a signal down to your ovaries and then your ovaries produce something called a corpus luteum. A corpus luteum is a cyst that grows on your ovary every month through your ovulation period. This is the potential egg that grows from the ovary. If you ejaculate it in, what happens is the semen fer fertilizes that corpus luteum, and that corpus luteum forms to be a fetus or what you call an embryonic sac. And this is how a baby is born. Each month, if you don't get impregnated during this time, what happens is progesterone is produced by the pituitary gland, and this corpus luteum cyst is supposed to be broken off the ovary. If it's not broken off the ovary because you have too much estrogen build up, what happened is next month come around, another cyst come. Then another month, another cyst come. And then these cysts coagulate themselves together and it creates something called a fibroid. So your fibroid is coming from the overproduction and the overstimulation of estrogen by way of the pituitary gland and the thyroid. So if you heal the pituitary, you heal the thyroid, you will get rid of the actual fibroids. So we're going to have to take the package up. You're going to need the geogenetic therapeutic package level one, but you're going to keep the same diet. Okay. That's what you're going to need. Uh, what did you say? Which package? The geogenetic therapeutic package level one. And you're going to keep the same diet. Well, the same living, should I say, because it's not a diet. Okay. Package one. Yep. So you're going to be healing the thyroid gland, the parathyroid gland, and the pituitary gland. While we're doing that, make sure you stay away from estrogen binding foods, estrogen forming foods, and estrogen like molecules. Because there's a bunch of molecules that, that looks like estrogen to the body that's not estrogen. And these are things like uh, plastics, microplastics and stuff in your body. The body will recognize it as estrogen when it's not. Stay away from soy, stay away from tofu, uh, stay away from water and plastic bottles. Make sure that you're not putting food in. And plastic containers when you're cooking your food and stuff like that. And this will keep you away from estrogen. And the further away from estrogen you stay to bring more pregnenolone and progesterone in the body, the more progesterone in the body will actually cause those, those, those tumors, that's really what they are, fibroids, to shrink. Plus, get on the herbs and geogenetic therapeutic package level one. We're going to string and pull all of those things from the endometrium lining of your cervix, where it really is where these fibroids break down. And that's how you get your menstrual cycle in the first place. So if you do that, you're going to be good. Okay, thank you so much. If that was me, that's what I would do. If that was okay. me, because I'm not a doctor. I'm not on here to prescribe anything, you know. So if that was me, that's what I would do. Okay, thank right, you. you. got that? Where you from? Houston. Houston, Texas. All right, make sure you say peace, love, light, and healing to your family. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh, peace. Y'all give her a break, y'all. She still got in the camera, y'all. And she even showed her... uh her uh, uh, toothpaste, pulling her pimple. So I'm proud of you guys. I will right, we'll do one more, one more, y'all, and then I'll be back live. From now on, I'm going live on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Y'all got my word. I'm going to try my hardest to make it. I know I've been doing a lot of things. On Sunday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, uh, we'll be live. And what y'all can do is y'all can start emailing me questions again at questions at yakiawaken.com. I'll go live and I'll answer them. But Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, I'm going to be checking in with y'all. Shouts out to Nabi. Nabi told me to do that. All right, let's see who else we got. This is my last one, y'all. I'm going to do my last one, and I got to go. I got to hit the gym, y'all. One minute I learned more than I ever learned in school. All praises, Soul J. That's what we need. This is real education here. Peace, peace. How you feeling? Wow. Wow, I'm feeling great, brother. I couldn't believe you accepted my live request. Oh, of course, of course, <laughs> man. I'm going, I'm going online, man. How you feeling? What's your name and where you from? My name is Yesaya, and I'm from Toronto, Canada. Toronto. Yesaya. Ah, yeah, yes. Yeshua, the Savior. Yes, brother. Yes, how you feeling, bro? I'm feeling amazing still. Um, how are you feeling? Man, I can't complain. Toronto in the building. Talk to me, bro. What's going on with you? Okay, so I've had sciatica issues since I was about 12 years old, and no one ever told me what it was. When you just brought that that um, diagram up, mm -hmm. I believe it was, or I was, maybe I was watching it on your page. Yeah, you watched that sciatica that. nerve. Man, I pissed a lot yeah. of people off with that. Doctors was mad at me. There's a whole doctor that made a whole video about me off that because a lot of people ain't on their medicine no more from that sciatica video. Make sure y'all go check out that sciatica video. That was a good video. Yes. That was a good video. When I, when I clicked that, it 
it brought some clarity to me that it's not just my because I couldn't I couldn't imagine it just there's something wrong with my nerve. Mm -hmm. So I just was curious to know what your advice would be because I'll tell you what my issue is. Sometimes I have it on the right side, sometimes I have it on the left side. Um, I definitely don't think I drink enough water, mm -hmm. but I also do have a problem with hydration. And then a little bit of background I could give you on that is my mother had her thyroid removed. Mm, okay. Yes. So I my mother's a Caucasian. Mm -hmm. My father's a black man. Okay. That makes you a black man if your father's black. But he, yeah, he either here or there, whether, whether your father was white or black, I'm not stopping yeah. you from your healing, brother. You still gonna hear? No, no, no. I know. I'm just brother. giving you. I'm just giving you that because that's genetics at the end of the day. So I'm just. You. I'm just you. giving you and that. I'm glad you realized yeah. that. I'm glad you realized that without thinking it's racist. So that that's also spiritual. By just because we're on the live, I just want to say that's spiritual bypassing if we ignore genetics. Exactly. So genetics also Stay are again, part of. Young brother, brother that's what. It is spiritual bypassing to not acknowledge your genetics Boy, before you. we go up, because that's the root, right? But I'm telling you, people do not understand this ideology or concept, and I don't know why. But that's neither here nor there right now. I'm glad you said that. Uh, I need you to check your disc to make sure that you don't have any type of, because you know dehydration uh, enforces and promotes degenerative disc disease and, or bulging disc. And if them discs are start slipping, you can start clamping on certain cranial nerves or them 10 cranial nerves that come down and that be around that area. So I want you to go get your disc checked. Uh, but what okay. you can do, if you can tell if it's an issue, what you're gonna do is you can do the low hanging head method that I taught you in that video, or you can Google yeah. some more sciatica relieving exercising. And once you do those exercising, if you feel a relief during those exercise nine times out of 10, you have a degenerative disc and we're gonna have to get hydration and regenerate those those discs and that's a whole okay. and, and in order to now this is what i do though it's the same thing i said in the video i always recommend the geogenetic therapeutic package level one and a very 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 hard hydrational drink the drink that i just gave the last lady will work very very good for that uh exercising them the exercise that i was telling you relieving pressure from that disc is very very good but you can degenerate you can regenerate those discs but you have to hydrate you said you had a hydration problem so you damn near yeah. gonna have to force yourself to drink like for instance on an average brother how many ounces of liquids do you think you drink a day i could say in liters i could say on average maybe i drink a, a liter of water a day if i actually average it throughout the whole week okay that's well that's honestly not that bad though but now what i want okay. you to do though distilled distilled water so look what i want you to do is because you need minerals because minerals and electrolytes is what really e equals hydration i want you to switch okay. though that liter of water over to h3o juice start juicing and that'll make a world of difference and then the geogenetic therapeutic package level one and you you need silica i can tell that your body is missing silica off back if you have a sciatic nerve issues because that this is what it takes is silica and magnesium and selenium to rebuild it okay silica selenium and magnesium and magnesium, have magnesium. and you can find okay. and what you would do is instead of finding it in isolated supplements start googling and researching and do peer review science articles on different whole foods and fruits that have selenium silica and magnesium in it at, at once and that's what's going to really rebuild those areas of your body i give so much thanks thank you brother oh, it's all good brother i appreciate you brother appreciate you too all right make sure you say peace love light and healing to your family all right brother you too peace I guess I can do one more, y'all. I can do one more. We're going to do one more, family. One more. Who we got? Who we got? I'm just going to scroll up, and whoever ends at the end of my scroll will get hit. Except it's my last one, y'all. And look, all of my lives, I'm doing this, y'all. All of my lives, I'm doing what I'm doing now. So whenever I'm live, jump on, share this everywhere, and you'll be able to join the live with me. My last person, I think I accepted him. It looked like it didn't work. Let's do it one more time. I just did another one. Let's see if they bring in. Real Hill, almost oh, definitely. I ain't playing, I ain't lying, I ain't scamming, none of that. Y'all see my uh, stories? I share I share people receiving my package all the time. Peace, God. Peace, peace, God. How you feeling, King? What's your name and where you from? Uh, I'm Elijah. I'm from Cincinnati. He was Elijah, just out here on the 11th. Your real name is Elijah. Ali Ja. 
Yaliza, Yaoliya, Yaoliya, which means God is my power, God is my strength. Mm. Who said it? Um, so I've been having uh problems, honestly, like since about seventh grade, I noticed that I had bumps on the um on the shaft mm -hmm. of my penis, like, and it was like the doctors didn't say nothing about it because I got a, a checkup. You know, when you see stuff like that, the doctor will usually say something, but they didn't. So is it on and, the shaft? Real quick, is it on the shaft or is it under the head of the penis? It's like both. Oh. I know exactly what you got. And I also urinate. When I urinate, it's mucus, it's inflammation down there. I or took you, ADHD medicine growing up. Or yeah. You, you circumcised? Yeah. Yeah, let me show you something. I bet you I know what it is. And it's not a sexually transmitted disease because it happens mm. when you're young. Mm. Let me show you. They said follicleitis on Google, but I can't. Yeah. You feel me? Uh huh. Hold on. I'm gonna pull it. I got my tablet. I'm gonna pull it up for you. Oh, yeah. Man, I manifested this. That's crazy. I say. Uh, some people go and get surgery and get them, get because it's not warts you're dealing with. Uh, yeah. It's not herpes you're dealing with. It's not even an STD. It happens sometimes after circumcision. And a lot of adults that I talk to about it, if we can't remove them through detoxification, they have to yeah. get them surgically removed. All right. So look, they call they call fibroepithelial polyps. I'm going to show you what they look like. Wow. And look, don't be embarrassed. Look, do you not? There's hundreds of thousands of brothers right now in the U.S. that suffer from this, but they scared to speak about it because sometimes it look like an STD when it's not. Yeah, I, I, I went to the doctor and they, I told him about it. They was like, it's nothing major because I did urine tests and stuff like that just to make sure, you know. Now, I'm but they did like. say high protein in the urine and yeah, stuff. But. Now, now that, yes, yes, high protein. Now, check this out. This is what this look like. Oh. Uh, for people that's on my thing, I'm finna change my camera. Viewer description is advised, so please don't report me because this is for educational purposes only. See that? Yeah. See that? And this is not an actual STD. You see what it's called? Pearly penile polyps. See this mm. is, and this is not an STD whatsoever. And I can show you more that look like this, and they show up on the shaft as well. Now, too much pro too much protein can cause these. Not only can too much protein cause these, but actually uh, getting circumcised and not letting the circumcised kill the right way will cause these as well. And fungus getting trapped because when you get circumcised, what they do is they cut off your your cleaning ducts. A circumcision, they cut their glands off, and these glands are used to actually regulate mucus and actually to get rid of a lot of bacteria that builds up around the actual head of the penis. So when you get that skin cut off, you don't have mucus to regulate that system. That's why you're saying you're having that mucosis discharge and you don't have mm. an STD or you're building up these different polyps. Uh, 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 I don't want to call them warts because they're not warts around the yeah, penis. Not, yeah. yeah, they're not warts either. Here go another one, brother. Check this one out. And this yeah, is what uh, they look like. Last year, I had also had went to the doctor for a, a UTI and stuff. I took their medicine, but I also did herbs while taking the medicine, you know. And y'all look, so. look this up. It is not a disease. Wow. So this is what I recommend. I am, I'm not going to lie. What I have seen people, that people to get rid of this, like for sure, they actually have to get laser, laser surgery. Uh, we wow. See, yeah, they didn't offer you that? Nah, I, I'm, I'm not gonna take that route. <laughs> I, I mean, what what you can what you can really do is this. I mean, explain what it is. Uh, y'all research what it is. I just showed y'all the names, and once people are aware that that's actually not an STD, and you show your paperwork and show that you ain't got an STD, your woman shouldn't really have no problem with it because it ain't nothing you can pass on to her because it's not an STD. Yeah. It's actually a defect due to circumcision and due to protein. That's really what it wow. is. But a lot of brothers. A lot of brothers get it laser laser removed, and it don't mess with your it don't mess with your uh, erections or nothing. If you do get it laser removed, it won't it won't mess with you getting an erection or nothing like that. Just to let you know, uh, just make okay. sure that you're not eating, right. make sure that you're not eating any fungus forming foods. Uh, stay away from as much yeast as possible. Don't be eating right. too many complex proteins. Because I have been itching down there, no lie. Yeah, so, so. See, that's the, but that's the fungus because they that's they the they hold yeah they they pockets they hold fungus. Mm -hmm. So you have hmm. to stay away from that. They hold fungus and yeast, and it will cause you to itch. And then another thing is, if you can, make sure you wear 100% cotton boxers and let your penis breathe. You have yeah, to let right. your penis breathe. 
And, I was um, th- see, I got. I was just thinking about buying new boxers this week. That's yeah, crazy. Do a hundred, do a hundred percent cotton. And when you get out the shower, make sure that you're not putting heavy oil, shea butter. Don't put no shea butter on your penis. Nah. Uh, don't put you don't put no oils on your penis. The only oil that I put on there that's a light coating oil would be coconut oil. That's the only oil. I wouldn't do any All oil right. other than that. I was using castor oil, but I also was using coconut. Moist in the area, which causes more bacteria and fungus and mold buildup, which is gonna cause more itching as well. All right, okay. That's but good. yeah, but just just think about way. The only two ways I didn't see people get rid of that is uh, cleaning up their diets very very good, or they do laser surgery and they get them burnt off. Okay, all right. Or can I ask you one more question before course, we go? Of brother. Hey, look, you can ask whatever you want because you was brave enough to all come right. on here and do that. This is so living right. for our brothers. I'm 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 bro. I. I praise you for even coming on here and saying I appreciate this. it. This is healing. I've been for watching you for over a year now. There's a bunch of mm-hmm. brothers suffering from stuff like that, but scared to admit it because the stigma of STDs and 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 that's what it looked yeah. like. So people are afraid to even have confidence enough to even speak about these things on a public platform. So you can ask whatever you want, King. All right. So when I, I grew up taking ADHD medicine, it would that have an effect on my thinking and all that? Yes, it will. Yes, it will. What kind of ADHD got, like, was it? Was it Adderall? They just said they just said ADHD. I had I took Focalin. I took anxiety medicine. Like I took I had to take four different pills a day, and they like they was big pills. Like so. So we gotta cleanse. The, we gotta cleanse the glymphatic system. The glymphatic system is the sewage system of the brain. The only way you can do that is by cleansing the lymphatic system and cleansing the gut. Uh, to cleanse medicines, to cleanse different types of mercury and different types of cytotoxins out of the brain. Uh, you have to cleanse the glymphatic system and relieve that biometric pressure by cleansing the gut. The only thing I can recommend you do is going on an all fruit diet uh, for about at least 21 to 30 days and getting a geogenetic therapeutic package level one from off the site. That'll really flush and cleanse and you'll be able to move amyloid protein out of the brain, beta blocking proteins out of the brain. You can remove uh, any anything, uh, metals out of the brain, especially mercury. Mercury is definitely built up in the brain and then precious metals okay. that hide behind the tissue. So geogenetic therapy therapeutic uh, package level one with an all-fruit diet that's high in berries. Berries will bring a bunch of antioxidants to the brain and end up being a bunch of oxygen to the brain. Berries are your oxygenators, and if you get all oxygen right. in a proper blood flow, that will detox the brain and have you thinking better, brother. All right. I appreciate it, man. man and appreciate one you. more for our, one more. I had, um, last year when I had a UTI, I had a lot of kidney pain. Would that have anything to do with adrenal fatigue? Yes, it will. I get yes. tired and all yes, that. Yes, it will. Adrenal fatigue. You got to remember your adrenals in control of cortisol. It's in control of adrenaline. It's in control of your sugar utilization throughout your body, your mineral utilization throughout your body, your steroid okay. utilization throughout your body. So if the adrenals go down, you get fatigued and you get tired because you're not able to utilize energy. Once the adrenals go down, the adrenals act as they pump mechanism. So have you ever seen the fish tank? Uh, yeah. Actually, so in yeah. fish tank, you got a filter, right? Yeah. But on top of the filter, you have something to plug that filter into the wall. What plugs yeah. the filter up and keeps the filter running is the adrenal glands. The actual okay. filter is the kidneys. So imagine a filtering system inside of a fish tank, and the fish is inside the fish tank shitting and pooping everywhere. Usually you have the filter to cleanse the shit and poop out of the out of the tank, correct? Well, right. what happens if you unplug the filter? Shit and poop is going to constantly build up inside the fish tank. Yeah. So now you have a very, very foggy and algae contaminated fish tank because your adrenals or the pump to plug in is not working. And that's what a UTI is. A UTI, if it's not a sexually transmitted disease, is basically you to unplug the, the electrical cord or what we call the adrenals. And the adrenals is not able to kick on the kidneys. And the kidneys now cannot filtrate all the metabolic waste out of the body. But if you can plug the adrenals or the cord back into the wall, the kidneys or the filtering system can cut back on and you can cleanse all the shit and the piss out of the fish tank. All right. So you need to get your adrenal glands back online. The adrenals okay. getting back online, I always recommend people do the kidney and adrenal kit. If you don't have okay. the money to do that right now, you can get ashwagandha. Ashwagandha. I and take me- that. I took that earlier. Wow. And, and, and mecca root. Ashwagandha and okay. mecca root is very, very good to kick the adrenals back on. Do that with a All high right. fruit diet, and you will get rid of the adrenal fatigue. Okay. So you said geogenetic package one. Yeah, package one. And that and. Now, 
And then if just for the kidney issue, it will be the kidney and adrenal kit. But if you get, if once you go on the website and you type and you click on the geogenetic therapeutic package, list everything that you just told me, and we'll put the package together inside of one package to fit your okay. metabolic needs. All right. That's great right there. I appreciate right, you, King. I appreciate it, man. Hey, I really appreciate your bravery, man. I wanna I, yeah. I really wanna work with you, bro. I wanna give you something off your package just for you having the bravery to do this. So if you can shoot me All an right. inbox soon, shoot me a DM as soon as we get off of here. Okay, I'm gonna I'm inbox you as soon as I get off here. You All got right? my word, I'm gonna help you out, bro. You got my word. All right, I appreciate it. I wow. appreciate you, Thank King. You, Peace, man. God. Peace, man. See, that's the type of bravery we need, people. That's what we need from our community. That was so healing. That's what we need. You see that? You know how much that just taught people? A lot of people are ashamed knowing that they don't have an STD, but walking around with these different bumps on them and don't know what it's from, having all type of psycho psychological issues. I had a brother that tried to kill himself from having that, and it's not even a damn disease. It happens at circumcision, y'all. Do y'all realize how healing that was? <laughs> man, I don't think y'all know how powerful this stuff truly is, man. But with that being said, I got to go hit this gym. Peace, love, light, and healing. Peace to the gods, peace to the earth. I'm now live every Sunday, every Tuesday, and every Thursday. We back dropping more content. Book going to be ready. A bunch of seminars coming to a city near you. I appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all follow. Make sure y'all share this everywhere, y'all. The more people can listen to this real knowledge and really change their life. I love y'all and Dean and Truth. Hey. Love yourself. Stop being so hateful. Get in that gym. Build some muscle, y'all. Eat right. Get on the all fruit and vegetable diets and love yourself, family. I love y'all. Shalom, laka, mishpati. Bless us, family.